What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another D5 render video for you. So in today's video we're going to check out the new features contained in the newest version of D5 Render, version 2.0. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so you can find out more about this new release by visiting this post in the D5 Render forums. So this talks through kind of in detail all of the different things that were changed. There were a lot of different changes and things that were added inside of version 2.0. So. Um, let's go ahead and start taking a look at some of these. So first off, they've gone through and they've redesigned the user interface of the program. And so what they've tried to do is they've tried to kind of simplify the whole thing and put things in kind of a logical location. All right, so if we look at this, you can see how you've got your scenes over here on the left-hand side as well as your assets that you've imported. You can access your D5 render assets over here by clicking on this button. And then they've kind of simplified the top so that you've got buttons in here to add lights, use the path tool, draw vegetation, and then add particles. So you can add things right here. On the right hand side of the page, you've got things having to do with like your HDRI sky, or if you're using the actual physical sky in here, you can adjust the physical sky over here as well. And then you've also got options in here to adjust your clouds um, with the amount and the speed at which they're moving things like that so um, they've kind of simplified everything I, I think this is probably a little bit more intuitive at least to me um, but you do have options over here to adjust like the effects for your camera things like that all right so in addition they've also added a path tool I think for those renderings where you want people walking around or cars um, driving around this is definitely something that's gonna be really important so in order to access that tool what you can do is you can just click in here in order to activate the path tool so there's this button right here and you can select either character or vehicle and so notice how these character assets in the free version there's three of them here you can also unlock the others by going to the pro version you can click on the button right here in order to do that so um, that's also an option but the way that this tool works is let's say that we were to come over here and what you do is you want to make sure that you select a model so this one right here, I'm just going to use this singular model, but then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to click in order to add a path. And so notice how when I add a path, what that's going to do is that's going to add characters walking along the path. And so if you had multiple characters in here, you could select them. So you could check the box right here. I've only downloaded the one for right now, but you can see how adding those characters walking is really easy. You can also come over here and you can adjust this by dragging the dots. So it's really intuitive the way that this works, right? You can just click and drag this over here. Um, it's pretty simple to do. And then once you're done, you can just click on done right here. And notice how when, you, when you're done setting your path, you can go back in and edit that by clicking on the edit button. Um, but you can also adjust which models are in here. You can adjust the density, which is gonna be the number of people that it adds, as well as the width of that path. So notice how before when I had this wider, it's placing these people outside of the sidewalk. But if I move this over like this, um, it's going to put them just more on that like singular path right here. And can turn the density down and yep. And then you can do the same thing with vehicles. So if I click in here and add a vehicle path, what this is going to do is, and let's just do something very simple. We'll just add a path so we're going to add a car. So in this case, I'm going to add this car. You could download the others and add them to this as well. So you'd have some variation. But um, if I click in here, this is going to allow me to add a vehicular path like this. And so you can kind of edit that path again. And then when you're done, notice how the vehicle path gives you some other options in here as well. So you can set number of lanes. In your path, you can set if it's dual, meaning some go one way, some go the other way, as well as the overall width of the path like this. You can also adjust which direction the cars are going, the speed of the cars with this slider, and if the cars are snapped to the ground. So if you're doing something up a hill or something like that, you can check that box right here. So adding those vehicles is now really easy inside of your D5 render scenes, which is super exciting. So they've also added a vegetation path tool, which again is very exciting to me because I feel like the vegetation path tools, the ones I've seen that actually allow you to add vegetation along a path like this, um, are really some of the best tools for placing things like trees. All right, so let's say we wanted to add some trees 
in a row with this tool active, well, we would just check the box for the models that we want in here. So these three right here, and then you can just use the path tool in order to spread these along a path. So once the path is done, you can click on done, but then you can adjust number of items, direction, but then you can also randomize the direction and the spacing along the path. So this is perfect for a lot of the time you want to be able to put things kind of in a line, but you still want some randomization in there. You can also set uh, the random offset from the center of the line like this. So, and then you can also adjust the size of the trees that are placed in here and the random size, which is gonna allow you to really randomize this. So this is a really fast way of adding trees in here. Um, again, I mean, this implementation, it's very similar to the implementation I've seen in other programs, but I think having a tool like this is something that's really important and I'm excited to see it in D5. So there's a bunch of other stuff in here like getting the GeoSky system, um, optimized camera movement. You can take a look at this page in order to see those. I wanna jump down to um, some of the new materials. So right now there's a new grass material contained inside of the material inspector. All right, so this is a grass plane that I created in SketchUp and exported to D5 Render. And so what we can do for the material here is we can select it using the color picker right here and then under your material template, there's now an option here for grass. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to apply grass anywhere that material is applied inside of your model. So applying the grass in here is as easy as just applying the material template and then adjusting the height. Um, I think you might be able to do some stuff with this random UV in order to randomize this a little bit, but um, since this is a very simple plane, I don't think it's doing very much right here. But applying that grass is really easy in this new version. So another function they've added to their geo and sky system is the weather function um, and the clouds specifically. And so what the cloud system has done is this has added clouds to your scene that actually move and are simulated up here. So notice how you can adjust the size of the clouds or the amount of clouds as well as how quickly those clouds are moving and the direction. So you can use that to really quickly add weather to your scenes like this. Um, so you can definitely do that. Note that there's not a whole lot of like keyframing or anything like that that's in there right now, but it does allow you to create some really interesting things with animations and things like that. So at the moment, I don't believe the clouds can be used with an HDRI, so it's kind of an either or thing, but it definitely is a welcome addition, especially if you're trying to create something that uh, has like animated weather or something like that. So they've also added a wind system and certain trees. So if we look in the library right here, um, notice that they've got this little icon up here. Certain trees are now going to be affected by that wind system. So if we were to turn wind on, for example, and crank the strength up a little bit, notice how the leaves and the trees are actually gonna move with that wind. You can also adjust the direction of the wind, the way that that's gonna go. So again, this can be something that can really add some life to your rendered images. Um, just by making the trees and branches move along the wind inside of your renderings. So there's a ton of other things that they've added that are kind of smaller changes, but they are gonna be things that are going to um, definitely affect your options, right? So supporting 16K export, um, emissive materials, being able to adjust the color or the light temperature, um, as well as a bunch of other things in here as well, improvements to the fog effect, um, vegetation improvements, all those different things. All right, so I'm loving the direction that this is going. Some of these tools I'm super excited about, but go check it out for yourself. I'll link to D5 Render in the notes down below. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about these new features. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.